Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is part 9 of the CCNA exam practice question series. I will be covering the topics and questions that will help you pass the CCNA certification exam. In this video I have compiled a 30 practice questions to get you prep and primed for the success on the CCNA certification exam. But hold on tight because it's not just about answering questions. We will also be explaining the concepts that will make you feel like Cisco networking superhero. So if you are ready to ace the CCNA exam and elevate your career to new heights, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss any future content. So let's gear up and dive into the success. Question number one, refer to exhibit. An engineer is asked to insert the new VLAN into the existing trunk without modifying anything previously configured. Which command accomplishes this task? So we have this exhibit and we can see that we have a trunk link and this trunk link is already configured to pass through these VLAN. And these are 100, 101, 102, up to 103. And we have a new VLAN 104. So how will we add this VLAN to this trunk port without modifying or disturbing already configured VLANs? And the options are option A, switch port trunk allowed VLAN 100 to 104. So this shows the complete range. 100, 100, 101, 102, 103, and 104. Option B, switch port trunk allowed VLAN add 104. Option C, switch port trunk allowed VLAN all. And option D, switch port trunk allowed VLAN 104. And the correct command to accomplish this task is option B, switch port trunk allowed VLAN add. 104. So this command will uh, insert this VLAN or add this VLAN to the already trunk port that contains a VLAN up to 103. So this command adds VLAN 104 to the existing list of allowed VLANs on the trunk port without removing the current VLANs already allowed on the trunk. That's our VLANs 100, 101, 102 and 103. The add keyword ensures that it only adds the new VLAN rather than overwriting the existing ones. Question number two, refer to exhibit. Again, we have this exhibit. A static route must be configured on router R14 to forward traffic for the destination 172.21.34.0 slash 25 network that resides on the R86, that is router 86. Which command must be used to fulfill the request? So we have this router R14 and router R86. So we want to configure a route on this router R14 so that we can reach a network that is available on the router R86 and the network or the destination is 172.21.34.0 slash 25. Let me first go through the option and then I will explain the answer. So the options are option A, IP route 172.21.34.0 with the subnet mask 255.255.255.192 and the next half is 1073.65.65. Option B, IP route 172.21.34.0 with the subnet mask 255.255.255.0 and the next half is 10.73.65.65. Option C is IP route 172.21.34.0 and with the subnet mask 255.255.128.0 and the next half is 10.73.65.64. 
and the uh, option D is IP route 172.21.34.0 with the subnet mask 255.255.255.128 and the next hop is 10.73.65.66. So remember to configure a static route you must bear in mind three things. First is you just or forget about the command the three things that you should remember is the first one is the destination network so what is the destination network that we want to reach it is 172.21.34.0 and then what is the subnet mask of this destination network so the 25 can be written in the form of subnet mask as 255.255.255.128 this is the expression for slash 25 so this is the first requirement that you must uh, uh, understand or you must identify the destination network then the subnet mask and the last and the important thing is the next hub so what is the next hub we are here and we want to reach this router because the network is connected to this router so the next hub must be r86 this interface and this interface ip address is 10.73.65.66 uh, so the next hub is 10.73 dot 65 dot 66 so for our command will be ip route sorry for my bad handwriting and this so this or all this matches with this option so the correct option is option d so Again, this is the same explanation that I, uh, I, I already explained. So the destination is this network. The net mask is 128 to make the slash 25 prefix of the network on R86. And the next hop is this 66, the IP address of the interface uh, on R86, that is this one. Question number three, what, which field within the access request packet is encrypted by the radius so radius is the remote authentication protocol or service that is used to authenticate authenticate user when they uh, want to log in on the network devices and the options are so the uh, question here is that which packet is encrypted when this authentication takes place and the options are option a authorized services option b authenticator option c username and option d password and the correct option is option D, password. So in radius, that is remote authentication dial-in user service, only the password field within the access request packet is encrypted. The encryption is done using a shared, sacred, and NMD5 hash. But the rest of the packet, such as the username, is sent in plain text. This is why it's important to secure radius communication with additional protection such as ipsec when sensitive data is transmitted so another alternative to the radius is tecx plus in tecx plus both the username and password are encrypted just for your information Question number four, a network engineer is configuring a switch so that it is remotely reachable via SSH secure shell. The engineer has already configured the host name on the router. Which additional command must the engineer configure before entering the command to generate the RSA key? So for the SSH, you need to generate the RSA uh, key pair in order to encrypt the uh, SSH communication. But before that, what is uh, required? And the options are option A, password, password, option B, crypto 
क्रिप्टो की जनरेट आर एस ए मॉडुलस वन जीरो टू फोर ऑप्शन सी आई पी डोमेन नेम डोमेन एंड ऑप्शन डी आई पी एस एस एच अथेंटिकेशन ट्राइज अथेंटिकेशन री ट्राइज टू एंड द करेक्ट ऑप्शन इज दैट बिफोर जनरेटिंग द आर एस ए की यू शुड एंटर द कमांड आई पी डोमेन नेम डोमेन एंड दिस इज द एक्सप्लेनेशन Before generating the RSA key for SSH, the network engineer must configure a domain name using the command IP domain name command. This is required because the RSA key is tied to both the host name and the domain name, and SSH relies on the key pair for secure remote access. For example, the command would look like this: IP domain name, and the domain is example dot com. After configuring the domain name, the engineer can proceed to generate the RSA key using the crypto key generate RSA command. Question number five: Refer to the exhibit. This is the exhibit. Which two commands must be added to update the configuration of router R1 so that it accepts only encrypted connections? So again, we are talking about ssh uh, connection and the question is that which command must be added to this already configuration so that the uh, router r1 only accept ssh encrypted connections and the options are option a username cnex secret and the password option b ip ssh version 2 option c line vty04 Option D, crypto key generate RSA one zero two four, and option E, transport input SSH. So remember, we have to choose two options, and the two correct options are the first one is option D, crypto key generate RSA one zero two four. We need to generate the RSA keys, and the second one is that we know we need to tell the router to accept input. request as ssh so the explanation is for both the options crypto key generate rsa1024 this command generates the rsa key pair required for enabling ssh on the router without it uh, without this command ssh cannot function or without the rsa key pair ssh cannot function and the second one is transport input ssh this command limits the vty lines to only accept ssh connections ensuring that only encrypted sessions are allowed question number 6 what is the function of the controller in a software defined network in the options are option a multicast replication at the hardware level option b fragmenting and reassembling packets option c making routing decisions and option d forwarding packets so the purpose or the function of the controller in sdn is making the routing decisions so in sdn the controller is centralized entity that manages the entire network by making high level decisions such as routing it separates the control plane from the data plane where the controller decides how to route traffic and the switches or routers in the network simply forward packets based on those decisions so this is what we are talking about so this is the control plane controlled by the sdn controller and all the routing decisions are basically made over here by this controller and these routing decisions are then pushed to the data plane switches or routers so this is the concept of sdn and the function of the controller in sdn that the routing decisions are made here and then these decision are basically pushed or sent to the data plane where the actual data forwarding router and switches are available and where the uh, forwarding between the source and the des destination takes place based on the routing uh, information sent from the controller
Question number seven, refer to exhibit. And again, this is the exhibit. An engineer built a new L2 LACP ether channel between switch one and switch two and executes these show command to verify the work. Which additional task allows the two switches to establish an LACP port channel? So we have two switches, switch two and switch one and they have two physical links and we are trying to establish an LACP port channel and these are already the commands that are entered on the both the interfaces of both the switches so what additional command should be entered so that the LAC port channel configuration is complete in the option are option A change the channel group mode on switch 2 to auto Option B, change the channel group mode or switch 1 to desirable. Option C, configure the interface port 1 command on both sides. And option D, change the channel group mode on switch 1 to active or passive. And the correct option is, option D, change the channel group mode on switch 1 to active or passive. So as we can see on switch 2, here we can see on both the interfaces the channel group mode 1 is already active while this command is not available on both the interfaces of switch 1. So entering this command will do the trick and it will uh, uh, enable both the switches to establish the LSAP port channel. So the only remaining task to allow the two switches to establish an LACP port channel is to change the channel group mode on switch 1 to either active or passive. This will allow switch 1 to take the initiative in LACP negotiation and establish the port channel. Question number 8. What is the requirement for a non-overlapping Wi-Fi channels? And the options are option A, different security settings. Option B, discontinuous frequency changes. Option C, different transmission speeds. And option D, unique SSIDs. And the correct option is discontinuous frequency changes. So the explanation is that non-overlapping non Wi-Fi channels require discontinuous frequency ranges to avoid interference. This means that the frequencies used by the channel should not overlap with each other. For example, in the 2.4 GHz bands, channel 1, 6 and 11 are the only non-overlapping channels. Question number 9. A network engineer is installing an IPv6 only capable device. The client has requested that the, IP, the device IP address be reachable only from the internal network. Which type of IP address must the engineer assign? And the options are option A, unique local address, option B, link local address, option C, aggregatable global address, and option D, IPv4, compatible IPv6 address. And the correct option is option B, link local address. And the explanation is that a unique local address in IPv6 is used for local communication within a private network and is not routable on the global internet, similar to private IPv4 addresses such as 192.168. This makes it, uh, makes it ideal for devices that should be reachable only within an internal network. Link local address are used for communication within a single link and cannot be routed beyond that link. So here this is wrongly marked as the co correct answer. The correct answer is basically option A. So the link local address is the address that can be used for communication within a local network while the link local uh, 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 unique local address sorry while the link local address basically they are used for communication within a single link and cannot be routed beyond that link 
the aggregatable global address are routable on the internet and ipv4 compatible ipv6 addresses are deprecated and used in dual stack environment question number 10 refer to exhibit so this is the exhibit site a was recently connected to site b or a new single mode fiber path user at site a report intermittent connectivity issues with applications hosted at site b what is the reason for the problem so we have these two sites site a and site b they are connected between uh, connected between each other. they are connected using a single mode fiber and the distance is about 7 km but there are some connectivity uh, issues between these two sites so what is the reason and this is the exhibit we will take a look at this uh, in a while let me first go through the option option a heavy usage is causing high latency option b an incorrect type of transceiver has been inserted into a device on the link option c physical network errors are being transmitted between the two sides and option d the wrong cable type was used to make the connection and the correct option is that an incorrect type of transceiver has been inserted into a device on the link so if we uh, we have the configuration of both the interfaces that uh, are connecting the, these two locations for site a it is uh, this interface 10 gigabit ethernet 010 and uh, using this interface uh, configuration here we can uh, identify the issue so basically the sfp sr for sr stands for short reach or short range and this type of sfp or transceiver is basically used for short distances and multi-mode fiber while on the side b we have the correct transceiver type that is sfp lr that is long reach or long uh, range you can call it this is the correct sfp while this one is basically used for multi-mode fiber and it is it can be used for distances up to 300 meters and since the distance here is 7 km that's why we have the connectivity issues so let me bring the explanation so the sr in sfp dash sr stands for a short reach transceiver and this is used for short range applications of up to 300 meters distances with multi-mode fiber the sfp lr can achieve up to 10 km and is used with single mode fiber so the sfp lr this is the correct if we had uh, how to correct this issue we need to use the sfp lr here as well if we change this sfp sr to sfp lr then the issue will be resolved question number 11 an engineer must configure a router r1 for a new user account the account must meet these requirements and the requirements are it must be configured in the local database the username is engineer2 it must use the strongest password configurable which command must the engineer configure on the router and the options are option a username engineer to algorithm type s script secret test 2021 option b username engineer to secret 5 password and this password option c username engineer to privilege 1 password 7 s2021 and option d username engineer to secret 4 and the followed by the password and the correct option is option a username engineer to algorithm type algorithm type s script secret test 221 and this is the explanation so the algorithm type s script is the strongest strongest password hashing algorithm available on cisco devices 
offering more security compared to MD5 that is type 5 or SHA-256 type 4. Using this command ensure the password is securely hashed securely hashed using the S script algorithm fulfilling the requirement for the strongest password configuration. Question number 12 refer to exhibit. Again we have this exhibit. Router R1 resides in OSPF area 0. After updating the R1 configuration to influence the paths that it will use to direct traffic, an engineer verified that each of the four gigabit interfaces has the same route to 10.10.0.0 slash 16. Which interface will R1 choose to send traffic to reach the route? So, we uh, uh, have this configuration of uh, router R1. So, we have these interfaces. Each interface has the, the uh, bandwidth given. So, each interface has different bandwidth. And the question says that uh, each interface uh, has the same route. That is 10.10.0.0/16. So, which interface will then be used? All the four interfaces are listed: 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0.0.0.1, 0.2, and 0.3. So, which one will be used? So, the decision will be made based on the cost that will depend on their respective bandwidth. So, the correct option here is. Option B that is gigabit Ethernet 0 1. And why this is selected? It is because R1 will choose gigabit uh, uh, Ethernet 0 1 to send traffic to reach the route 10.10.0.0 10 slash 16 because it has the lowest cost and the highest bandwidth. So, how the cost is uh, calculated? So, uh, the Gigabit Ethernet 00, 0 has this MB uh, uh, divided by, it has this uh, 10,000 MB of bandwidth and the cost is equal to 10 while on G01 when it is calculated it is equal to 1. So, the lowest cost interface that is G01 is selected. Question number 13. What provides centralized control of authentication and roaming in an enterprise network? And the options are option A, a lightweight access point, option B, a firewall, option C, a wireless lane controller, and option D, a lane switch. And the correct option is option C, a wireless lane controller. So, a wireless lane controller that is WLC manages access points in an enterprise network providing centralized control over authentication, security policies and roaming. It enables seamless transition for wireless clients moving between access points, ensuring consistent network access and security across the wireless network. Question number 14, refer to the exhibit, this is the exhibit, traffic source from the loopback interface is trying to connect via SSH to the host 10.0.1.15, what is the next hop to the destination and the options are option A 192.168.0.7, option B 192.168.0.4, Option C 192.168.0.40 and option D 192.168.3.5. So, we are talking about reaching the 10.0.1.15. So, if we look at the uh, routes here, we have this route. We have this route, it certainly does not 
contain the uh, destination 1.15 this one also does not uh, contain the 1.15 so this is crossed this is also crossed this one basically contains the uh, 1.15 this one also does not contain because its range is up 0 to 15 but 15 is broadcast address it is not a specific host or usable ip address so the correct option is here this next hub 192.168.0.h because this route is the suitable route So our correct answer is option B 192.168.0.4. So the destination that is 10.01.15 will be reachable via this hub. Let's move forward to the next question. Question number 15 refer the exhibit and this is the exhibit which network prefix was learned via the internal EIGRP. And the options are so we have these multiple routes and they are learned via different routing protocols so which network was learned via the uh, routing protocol internal eigrp and the options are 172.16.00/16 option b 192.168.2.0/24 option c 207.165.200.0/24 and option D 192.168.1.0 slash 24 and the correct option is option B 192.168.2.0 slash 24 and where it is it is over here this so there are two reasons to select this when we are looking for internal EIGRP first is that <coughs> this d code uh, stands for the internal eigrp and the second is that we can also identify the route that from this administrative distance the administrative distance for internal eigrp is 90. so these are different co codes for the uh, routing protocol types c is for connected s is for static d is for EIGRP internal, O is for OSPF, R is for RIP and D is also for uh, external EIGRP. I think uh, this EX is also for the external EIGRP and these are the administrative distances of different type of routes. For OSPF, this is 110, for RIP it is 120. For EIGRP external, it is 170. For EIGRP internal, it is 90. And for static, it is 1. And for connected, it is 0. So you must keep this thing in mind when selected the route. The first uh, and the foremost option is the uh, you uh, looking for the longest prefix match. First is longest prefix match. And the second is then administrative distance. And the third one is the metric. So these are the matrix basically uh, after the administrative descent this 284437 these are the matrix. So the lower the better. In this case let, uh, the 0, 1 these are preferred over other routes. Similarly internal EIGRP will be preferred over all these. And again when uh, we have two routes having the same administrative descent then we will go to the next option that is metric lower the metric the uh, uh, better chance of the route to be selected as the uh, selected route for following the traffic
Question number 16. How should the configuration be updated to allow PC1 and PC2 to access the internet? So we have this PC1 and PC2 and they both have these IP addresses. These are private IP addresses and we have a net router between them and internet. So this is the uh, configuration that we have available. What else must be added to this configuration so that these PCs can access the internet? And the options are, sorry, options are option A, modify the configure, modify the configured number of the second access list. Option B, add either the IP net inside or outside command under both interfaces. Option C, remove the overload keyword from the IP net inside source command. And option D, change the IP net inside source command to use interface gigabit ethernet 00. And the correct option is option B, add either the IP net inside, outside command under both the interfaces. So we are talking about these two interfaces. These are over here, one is this one and the other is this one. So this is the explanation. The correct way to allow PC1 and PC2 to access the internet is to add either the IP net inside or IP net outside command under both interfaces. This will specify the interfaces as belonging to the inside or outside network respectively and enable net to translate the private IP address of PC1 and PC2 to the public address that is 201.165.202.130. So the public address is this one, which is uh, configured on G01 to access the internet. And when you want to go to the internet, the private IP addresses must be translated to the public address. And this is done by a net router through this configuration, including this one. Question number 17, refer to the exhibit. This is the exhibit. An engineer is updating the R1 configuration to connect a new server to the management network. This is the new server. The PCs, sorry, the PCs on the management network must be blocked from pinging the default gateway of the new server. Which command must be configured on the R1 to complete the task? So the question is that we are here on R1 and we want to uh, access this new server. A command must be entered on this R1 so that these PCs or network over here are able to access this new server. But only this new server, not the default gateway of the server. It means that we need to uh, enter a command that will configure only the IP address of the new server and not the whole network. So the options are option A, IP route 172.16.2.0.255.255.255.0 and the next hop is 1.192.168.1.15. So uh, this command is basically configuring the whole network. So I think this is wrong because we want to uh, reach only the single server and we want to block this PC from pinging the gateway of this server which is over here. Then the second command is IP route 172.16.2.2 and uh, subnet mask is 248. So again, I think uh, this is wrong because we want to, the, uh, for a single IP, this is not the correct subnet mask. So again, I think this is wrong. The third option is was 72.2.2.255.255.255 and GI00, yes. So this seems like the correct command because we are uh, configuring a route to reach this server whose IP address is 172.16.2.2 2 
and subnet mask is again 255.255.255.0 and this route will exit through this interface so this seems like the correct option this is also wrong because this is also configuring the whole network so the correct option is option c i hope this is uh, understandable let's move forward to question number 18 which protocol is used for secure remote cli in the option are option a https option b http option c telnet and option d ssh so we are talking about cli that is command line interface so option a this is not a cli this is basically gui https http is again gui as well as it is not secure https is secure but it is not gli while well, http is both neither cli nor secure telnet is g uh, cli but it is not secure it sends data in plain text and not encrypted so the only correct option remains is the ssh which is both cli and is secure the ssh connection is encrypted Question number 19, what is the purpose of the IP address DHCP command? In the option are option A, to configure an interface as a DHCP server. Option B, to configure an interface as a DHCP helper. Option C, to configure an interface as a DHCP relay. And option D, to configure an interface as a DHCP client. And the correct option is option D, to configure an interface as a DHCP client so when you apply the ip address dhcp command to an interface on a router or switch it instructs the device to obtain its ip address and other network configuration information dynamically from a dhcp server this allows the interface to act as a dhcp client other options option a to configure an interface as a dhcp server this would involve using the ip dhcp pool command instead option b to configure an interface as a dhcp helper this would involve configuring the ip helper address command to power dhcp request to a dhcp server on a different subnet and option c to configure an interface as a dhcp relay this is also done using the ip helper address command Question number 20, which wireless security protocol relies on perfect forward secrecy? And the options are option A, WPA3, option B, WPA, option C, WP, and option D, WPA2. And the correct option is option A, WPA3. This is the explanation. So WPA3 that is Wi-Fi protected access 3 includes enhancements over previous protocols one of which is the use of perfect forward secrecy. Perfect forward secrecy ensures that session keys are not compromised even if the private key is compromised in the future meaning each session has unique encryption keys that cannot be derived from others. Question number 21, refer to exhibit packets received by the router from BGP enter via a serial interface at 209.165.201.10. Each route is present within the routing table. Which interface is used to forward traffic with a destination IP address of 10.10.10.24? So this is the exhibit. And we have these uh, routing protocol EIGRP and OSPF. We have the same route 10.10.10.0/24, and the destination is available in all the routes. So, which route will be selected? And uh, the uh, options are option A, F0.10, option B, F0.11, option C, F0/12, and option D, F0/13 these are these interfaces we are talking about so which interface will be used to power the traffic so if you see here in this case we have the same protocol 
it has the same administrative distance so for route selection the first one is the as i already said the longest prefix match but here we can see that the prefix length is same so we will go to the next up is the which is the administrative distance so administrative distance of 1990 is less than 110110 so these are basically struck out because 110110 is greater than 90 less administrative distance is preferred so we are left with these three so the third we have again since we have the same administrative distance for these three routes we will go to the next option that is metric these this is the metric this is the matrix so since we are not talking about this these are already struck out although the metric 20 is the least of all so we will look in these three uh, three routes so here we can see that 144 is the smallest metric and in this way the interface f011 will be used to forward the traffic so the correct option is option b f0 slash 11 question number 22 what is a zero day exploit in the option or option a it is when a network vulnerability is discovered before a fix is available option b it is when the perpetrator inserts itself in a conversation between two parties and captures or alters data option c it is when the network is saturated with malicious traffic that overloads the sources and bandwidth and option d it is when an attacker inserts malicious code into a sole server and the correct option is that the zero day exploit is basically when a network vulnerability is discovered before a fix is available fix means a patch or a security update so the explanation is that a zero day exploit takes advantage of a newly discovered vulnerability in software hardware that has not yet been patched or fixed by the vendor this means that the exploit can be used to attack systems before the vendor has a chance to address the vulnerability Question number 23, which quality of service queuing method discards or marks packets that exceed the desired bit rate of traffic flow? And the options are option A, shaping, option B, policing, option C, CBWFQ, and option D, LLQ. And the correct option is option B, policing. So what is policing? Policing is a quality of service mechanism that enforces a bandwidth limit on traffic flows. When the traffic exceeds the configured rate, policing can either drop access packets or mark them using a method like DSCP marking to indicate they should be treated differently. This helps manage bandwidth and maintain performance for, for critical applications. Question number 24, what is the role of disaggregation in controller-based networking? So the controller-based networking are basically the STN, software-defined networking, where a controller is used and the options are, option A, it divides the control plane and data plane functions. Option B, it summarizes the routes between the core and distribution layer of the network topology. Option C, it enables a network topology to quickly adjust from a ring network to a star network. And option D, it streamlines traffic handling by assigning individual devices to perform either layer 2 or layer 3 functions. And the correct option is that the role of disaggregation in controller based networking is that the control plane it divides the control plane and data plane functions it is uh, in traditional network both the control plane and data plane are aggregated in a single device while in controller based or stn based these both are disaggregated they are separated that is what this question means 
So in control-based networking, this aggregation refers to the separation of the control plane, which makes decisions about how to forward traffic from the data plane, which actually forwards the traffic. This allows for centralized management of network policies and configuration, while the physical devices, switches, and routers focus solely on handling data traffic efficiently. This aggregation provides flexibility and scalability in managing modern networks. So this is how it looks like. So this is the controller. It is uh, where the control plane lies. And it is completely separated from the data plane. So the routing decisions are made over here and they are then pushed to the data plane where the which is our router lies which forward the traffic from the source to the destination. Question number 25 refer to exhibit the given window species. So this is the configuration of the window species. Uh, when you type the IP config slash all on the CLI of Windows CMD, you are presented with this information. So looking at this information, the given Windows PC is requesting the IP address of the host at www.cisco.com. To which IP address is the request sent? We are talking about resolving this host name or this domain name to IP address, which is the uh, this process is known as known, uh, known as translating from domain to IP and this process is basically done through DNS and is done by a DNS server. So the request will be basically sent to the DNS server. So we have the options of option A 192.168.1.226, option B 192.168.1.100, option C 192.168.1.254 and option D 192.168.1.253. And the correct option is this 192.168.1.253 and this is the correct option because if you look over here, this is basically the IP address of the DNS server configured. So basically to translate this domain name to IP address, the request is sent to the DNS server, which is 192.168.1.253. Question number 26, an engineer has configured the domain name, username and password on the local router what is the next step to complete the configuration to a secure shell access RSA key? So we are talking about again the configuration of SSH and the option are option A crypto key import RSA PEM, option B crypto key public keychain RSA, option C crypto key generate RSA and option D crypto key zero eyes RSA. And the correct option is option C crypto key generate RSA. So after configuring the domain name, username and password, the next step is to generate the RSA key pair, which is essential for enabling SSH access. The command crypto key generate RSA generates the RSA encryption key required for secure communication over SSH. The other options, option A crypto key import RSA PAM. This is basically used to import RSA keys from a file, not to generate them. Option B, crypto key public keychain RSA. This is used to configure a public keychain, not generate the RSA keys. And option D, crypto key zero eyes RSA. This command is used to delete zero eyes the RSA keys, which is not applicable here. Question number 27, which REST, that is we are talking about REST API, method updates an object in the Cisco DNA Center Intent API? And the options are option A, change, option B, update, option C, post, and option D, put. And the correct option is option D, put. So in RESTful APIs, the put method is commonly used to update an existing object or resource with, the, with new data. The put method replaces the current resource representation with the data provided in the request. 
This is the appropriate method for updating objects in APIs like the Cisco DNA Center Intent API. Question number 28. An administrator must use the password complexity not manufacturer name command to prevent user from adding Cisco as a password. Which command must be issued before this command? In the option are option A, password complexity enable. And B, config 0x2142. Option C, login authentication, my authentication list. And option D, service password encryption. And the correct option is option A, password complexity enable. So to enforce password complexity rules, the administrator must first enable password complexity checks with the password complexity enable command. After that, additional complexity requirements like prohibiting the use of the manufacturer name that is Cisco can be applied. Question number 29, what is a function of Cisco Advanced Malware Protection for Next Generation IPS? And the options are option A, authorizing potentially compromised wireless traffic. Option B, inspecting specific files and file types for malware. Option C, authenticating end users. And option D, URL filtering. And the correct option is option B, inspecting specific files and file types for malware. So Cisco Advanced Malware Protection provides advanced threat detection and prevention capabilities including inspecting and analyzing specific files and file types to detect malware. It continuously monitors for threats, provides detailed analysis and can block malware before it causes harm. Question number 30, refer to the exhibit. This is the exhibit. Router R1 must be configured to reach the destination 10.0.3.0/24 network from the 10.0.1.0/24 segment. Which command must be used to configure the route? So this is the source we want to reach from this source to the destination 10.0.3.0/24 which is over there this is the destination so which command must be used and these are the option option a ip route 10.0.3.0 with the subnet mask 255.255.255 and next hop 10.04 2. Option B, route add 10.0.3.0 mask 255.255.0.10.0.4.3. Option C, IP route 10.0.3.0.255.255.255.0 and 10.0.4.3. And option D, route add 10.0.3.0.255.255.255.10.0.4.2. 10 so if we write the route ourselves, the route command is basically IP route and then you write the destination network. In this case, it is 10.0.3.0. This is the network and then you write the subnet mask. So the subnet mask for slash 24 is 255.255. .255 dot 255.0 and the last option is next hop so what is the next hop you want to read here uh, to reach here to this router r3 so the next hop will be basically this interface dot 3 and the network is 10.0.4.3 so the next hop will be basically 10.0.4 sorry 10.0 0.4.3 so which then this command is basically this one so the correct option is option c